Maria, it's interesting. Emmanuel Macron has gone with VDL, Ursula von der Leyen. The message presumably is, because she's with him, that this is a unified European approach that Emmanuel Macron represents. My question is, does Emmanuel Macron represent Europe and is Europe unified on the issue of China? Well, the French president obviously represents the French Republic. That is that is clear uh, to everyone. And von der Leyen, who's the head of the commission, well, you could argue she is the one that is going to negotiate on behalf of the EU 27. But it is very clear that when Emmanuel Macron speaks, well, he speaks on his behalf. Uh, I think there's a number of things here. One is obviously there is going to be a meeting happening with the Chinese leader. When you listen to the words of the French president, he obviously believes uh, there is value in this conversation. There's quite questions about whether China uh, could be useful in uh, Russia's invasion of Ukraine, whether they could use their cloud over Vladimir Putin to de-escalate. But again, this is not a consensus position in the EU. There's other officials that believe this is entirely naive, that if China wanted to play its part and mediate to de-escalate, they could have done so already. They've had a year to do it, and they've not even called Zelensky once. And when I spoke to the Lithuanian foreign minister, just to give you an idea, he told me in my view, well, China cannot be a mediator. Let's have a look. Do you believe China will be ultimately the mediator in the war in Ukraine? Because you say Ukraine aims for victory. Mediation means compromise. Do you trust that China can do that? Or is that something that actually they should not be even aiming for? Uh, no, I don't believe that. Uh, that no, uh, no. Because we, we've already seen that they are, you know, aligning themselves. Or they want Russia to align to their version of the uh, global order, whatever that would mean from China's perspective. And definitely in, in that world order, uh, Ukraine is not able to maintain the full sovereignty. And that's Lithuania's foreign minister, Lam Burgess, who also told me, by the way, in his view, to call China's proposal a peace plan is wrong, as it does not well, secure the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of Ukraine. So, Guy, when you talk about this issue, you can see here there's a lot of different opinions. Yeah, a lot of different opinions, uh, Maria, and at the same time, there is a point to be made about de-risking and decoupling, and that is a fine line to walk. Can Macron do that tomorrow? Uh, well, again, you, you could argue he is there with a delegation, also businessmen. Obviously, uh, there has been criticism every time a European leader goes on a diplomatic mission with CEOs, because when you go to China to do that, well, you're there to cut businesses, to de-risk and also make new deals may seem a contradiction. But this is when von der Leyen steps into the action here. One of the things that she said is that overall, when you look at trade between the EU and China, a lot of it is beneficial for the EU. There are areas however, where China cannot play a big role. And obviously, we're talking about uh, semiconductors, we're talking about chips, we're talking about high technology, and those areas the EU will have mm -hmm. to de-risk. It's in that tension of what is profitable trade and what is a risky trade where von der Leyen is supposed to establish a common line for the EU.